Hi, Mom. What are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation. I'm your host, Sharon Rulier, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral on this, the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. We come together this morning to celebrate the ministry of faith formation and specifically to honor some exceptional catechists from all corners of the Diocese of Springfield with the Pope Pius X Award. This recognition is presented once a year to those who have given outstanding service to their parish in the area of faith formation. And joining us in this celebration is our Bishop William Byrne. He, along with Celeste Labby, the Diocesan Director of Faith Formation, will present the Pope Pius X Awards, as well as recognize those who earned certificates in catechetical leadership. We are so honored to have these important faith formation leaders with us in the cathedral today, along with family and friends. And as we do each week, we send out our best wishes to all in our viewing audience who may be celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. We send our congratulations to great friends of the Chalice program, Jackie and Bob Masha of Holyoke, as they marked their 61st wedding anniversary yesterday best wishes on many more years of happiness together. And we'd also like to wish our Chalice producer, Liz Gollin, a very happy special birthday that she just celebrated yesterday. Liz, may you have a very happy year and may it be magical. And we are also keeping in mind our grandparents as we celebrate National Grandparents Day on this special Sunday. And we're also thinking of those of you who are ill or homebound, especially if you're watching from your hospital room, nursing home, or extended care facility. We're praying for you and all who care for your needs. We also pray for the names that you, our viewers, have sent in for today's Book of Remembrance. May their souls and the souls of all our faithful departed rest in peace. We now welcome Bishop William Byrne as we celebrate our dedicated catechists and mark the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. With your spirit. On this uh, Catechetical Sunday, it's a, a joy to be with those catechists, especially those receiving the Pius X Award and also completing various certifications. So on this wonderful day, we celebrate the great gift of our faith and then those who share the faith. To prepare ourselves to celebrate together these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and peace. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. 
He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by, the, by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ear and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. My mom is 101 years old. So when she was born in 1923, and I remember years ago thinking about that, the world that she had seen, I said, well, mom, what did people do before television? And she said, we listened to the radio. And then as I thought about it, I said, what did people do before the radio? She said, we read books. And then what did people do before they read books? Those who couldn't read there before they had printing presses, before anything was available, they talked to each other. They shared stories. They prayed with one another. This was how a family, a community entertained itself, was to hearing the long stories of the faith, of God taking the people in Jesus' listening time to, through the desert and into freedom. They told the stories of families. They told funny stories that had happened along the way. That was what you did. So imagine if you're in the time of Jesus and you can neither hear nor speak. There's no American Sign Language. Those closest to you can sort of understand your gesticulations and point to things, but you're utterly cut off from the community, completely locked in to a world where you can't sit in the marketplace and on the front stoop and share the stories. You sit in silence. And so it is when Jesus has the miracle in today's gospel he opens his ears and he allows him to speak. It's a miracle, not just a physical healing. Jesus is healing relationships and community and family. He's freeing the man from a whole life of being alone to now being able to share the stories and hear the tales, to know what wonders God has done, not just in the past, but also to share the story of what Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has done for him. Imagine if the first voice you ever heard was Jesus. And the first words you ever spoke were to Jesus. To hear the word of God also meant to hear and open him to the whole life of God's in his life, this man whose name we don't know. And this is what truly happens when we actually hear the voice of Jesus in our own lives. The story is not just about one guy, but about all of us. 
who sometimes are just trapped in our own world, in our own thoughts, in our own concerns, that we can't hear God. He can't make it through the din of the chaos in our hearts. This is the story of all those in the scriptures, of the prophets, of, of Elijah on Mount Horeb who hears the small whisper and then God is in that. Of Samuel who's asleep in the temple as a boy and hears his name being called. And finally he says, speak Lord, your servant is listening. To each of the apostles as Jesus said, come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Suddenly God breaks into their deafness, into our deafness. Anyone who calls him or herself a disciple is somebody who has heard the word of God and allowed ourselves to be radically transformed. That God changes everything. Changes our perspectives, changes our priorities, opens our ears and frees us to then speak about his love to others. It's not just about what happened to one guy. It's about what's happened and what happens in the church each and every day and by extension to each one of us. To open our words to the word in scripture, to tradition in the teachings of the church. And so when we celebrate Catechetical Sunday this day, we celebrate those who have heard the word and allowed it to change them so much that they then feel compelled, called, gifted to speak that word to others. Whether it be with kitty catechs in the smallest of, a, of an atrium in the catechesis of the Good Shepherd, all the way to RCIA programs. To do just that, to speak of Jesus from the knowledge that we have heard and experienced is the most fundamental way of being a Christian. Jesus says before he ascends into heaven, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And this day we honor and celebrate those who have done just that. The world has changed, not by billboards or TV commercials or ads on the internet. <coughs> sure, they might help. But they are changed one heart at a time by sharing a word. And so this day, as we celebrate those who have done that, let's each of us be inspired. Inspired first to open our ears and open our hearts to hear the word that God is speaking to us each day, a different word, a different word of love, and then to tell somebody else about it. I'm gonna say praise be Jesus Christ and I want you to say now and forever. Praise be Jesus Christ. I invite you to stand and recite the creed with me. I believe in one God.
The Pope Pius X Award, you may be seated. The Pope Pius X Award is presented once a year to persons who have given outstanding service to the parish in the area of faith formation. The nominee must be currently active in a faith formation program and have been for a minimum of three years. I now present to you the 2024 Pope Pius X recipients I ask that you hold your applause until all have received the award and recognitions, and there will be opportunities for photographs following the Mass. From the Parish Community of Blessed Sacrament in All Souls Springfield, Paula Lopez Cabin. Paula has served our parish community for years. The youth can't wait to show up to her class. She constantly brings new ways of engaging them each week. She leads our youth group, sings in two choirs, all while being visually impaired. She loves with all of her heart. The Parish Community of Holy Cross Springfield presents Mary Ann Hauver. Mary Ann is a well-versed in Catholic faith. She is eager to help any way she can. Starting as a catechist assistant, she stepped up to help where needed. She teaches with passion and understanding. Thank you, Mary Ann. The Parish Community of Holy Trinity Westfield presents Lucina Lewinsky. Lucy is a very dedicated volunteer she serves in many roles, Polish cheer director, religious ed teacher, and parish council member. We are blessed to have her sharing her faith and knowledge with our students. The parish community of Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Westfield presents Melissa Taylor, who is unable to be with us this evening. The parish community of Our Lady of the Cross Holyoke presents Vanessa Villaronga. Vanessa has taught the kindergarten and grade one class for three years. She is patient and loving and her lessons are well planned. The children respond with enthusiasm. They love coming to class. Vanessa is a blessing. The parish community of Our Lady of the Lake Southwick presents Lois Batons. Lois is a retired elementary school teacher with 30 years of experience. Upon retirement, she decided to volunteer in our program, teaching the students in third and fourth grade. It has been a blessing to see her students grow in faith. The parish community of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Springfield presents Fernando Rodriguez. Fernando has been a confirmation teacher since 2021. He is amazing, especially with how he keeps his students engaged, including bringing them to Steubenville East each year. He supports all of our families, encouraging them to send their children to faith formation. The parish community of St. Cecilia Wilbraham presents Sheila O'Neill and Karen Pease. Karen and Sheila have been team teaching third grade for many years. They bring love and joy to each of their classes. They make sure their students know firsthand of Jesus' love for them. The parish community of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, North Adams, presents Brandon Gilvey, who is unable to attend tonight. The parish community of St. Jerome, Holyoke, presents Veronica Reyes. Veronica is caring, responsible, devoted, hardworking, and compassionate. She is an inspiration to our catechists, volunteers, and students. 
For the past five years, she has assisted her mother in the confirmation class. She assists with summer Bible camp, faith formation, and other parish activities. The parish community of St. John the Evangelist Agawam presents Karen Mellon, who is unable to attend tonight. The parish community of St. Mark Pittsfield presents Ellen Conlon, who is unable to attend tonight. The parish community of St. Mary Long Meadow presents Kara Conway, Kate Haber, and Kathy Ray. Kara, Kate, and Kathy have been a faithful catechist team for over a decade. They have followed a particular class since First Holy Communion through Confirmation and have brought countless hearts and minds closer to God. I often hear from their students how much they enjoy coming to Faith Formation. I'm honored to nominate them for this award. The parish community of St. Mary Westfield presents Adriana Lugo Zayas, who is unable to attend tonight. The parish community of St. Patrick Springfield presents Jesse Rivera, Jesse has been a catechist for five years and shows the utmost compassion and understanding to all of her students. Her faith formation class has the highest attendance of all of our classes, nearly 100%. We are very lucky to have her at our parish. The parish community of Saints Patrick and Raphael in Williamstown presents Candace Constantine. Candace demonstrates versatility and flexibility in our faith formation program. As a convert to the Catholic faith, she considers her role with the student to be of the utmost importance as she cherishes her own path to conversion. Candace has prepared second graders for their sacrament, designed a kindergarten program, and leads those preparing for confirmation. She engages teenagers into a deeper relationship with God. We are blessed to have her on our team. The parish community of St. Thomas the Apostle West Springfield presents Gay Morris. Gay has been teaching third grade for seven years. She is dedicated and committed to her class and the children she teaches. She goes above and beyond always asking the teachers if they need help cleaning up when class is over. Today, Bishop Byrne, I also have the great pleasure of presenting the following catechetical leaders who have worked diligently over the past two years to earn their diocesan certificate in catechetical leadership. Please come forward when I call your name. From the parish community of Holy Trinity of, in Greenfield, Virginia Christie, who is unable to attend tonight. From the parish community of St. Catherine of Siena Springfield, Teresa Hulse, who is unable to attend tonight. From the parish community of St. Charles Pittsfield, Michelle Henderson. From the parish community of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Northampton, Karen Bobala. From the parish community of St. Patrick and St. Raphael Williamstown, Karen O'Toole. Finally, Bishop Byrne, I am pleased to present to you the catechists who have been certified in level one for Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. These catechists have completed 90 hours of formation and will be putting their education to work in their parishes. Please come forward when I call your name. Stephanie Matre. St. Bridget's Amherst. Anne Figel, St. Charles Pittsfield. Alzi Mercado, St. Charles Pittsfield. Jackie Mercado, St. Charles Pittsfield. Elizabeth Vereski, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, North Adams, who is unable to attend tonight. Jane Allen, St. Patrick and St. Raphael Williamstown and Laura Day, St. Patrick and St. Raphael Williamstown, who is unable to attend tonight. Please join me in applauding all who have received the Pope Pius X Award, Certification in Catechetical Leadership, 
and a level one catechesis of the Good Shepherd. now and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, for our Pope Francis and our Bishop William, that they may inspire us to heed the call of God to continue the ministry of Jesus in our lives today. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those alienated from our church community, that, in, that inspired by our example, their eyes may be opened to the treasures of our Catholic faith, and so join us again at the table of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For grandparents, that they may be treasured by their children and grandchildren, a source of wisdom and joy for both and may be cared for as they age. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our catechetical leaders and catechists who have responded so generously to the call of our God, <coughs> excuse me, through the ministry of faith formation, that their work continues to inspire the future of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For all past and present recipients of the Pius X Award, that they may be blessed as they have been a blessing to our parish communities, let us pray to the Lord. We remember in prayer this morning all of our departed loved ones, including the names we will enter into our Book of Remembrance this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear these prayers, answer our needs. You have called us through your Son to go out and teach all nations. Bless those who do this each and every week and inspire us to do the same through Christ our Lord. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking in the one sacred mystery we may faithfully un be united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, <coughs> through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, together with our local bishop, Bishop Byrne, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy to us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, St. Pius X, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And one final thank you, and that's to Celeste Labby for guiding our catechists so wonderfully and joyfully. Thank you for what you do. The Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our thanks to Bishop Byrne for celebrating our Mass today, and thanks as well to Celeste Labby, Director of Faith Formation, for coordinating this Mass of recognition for our dedicated catechetical leaders. Congratulations to all the award winners and certificate recipients. We send our best wishes to all as they begin another year of education in the diocese. And mark your calendars for these upcoming events. Bishop Byrne invites all to join him at 10 a.m. next Sunday, September 15th at the Big E as he celebrates Mass under the Big Top. If you can't make it to that Mass each Sunday of the fair, there are going to be two Masses to attend, the first at 8.30 a.m. at the Meeting House on the Storiton Green and at 10 a.m. Mass in the Big Top Tent. Bishop Byrne would love to see a great turnout on this first Sunday of the fair, September 15th at 10 a.m. A Polish day will be held at the Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge on Saturday, September 21st. The event begins at 1 p.m. and will include adoration, rosary, and a mass at 2 p.m. Following the mass at 3 p.m. will be the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, Blessing of Religious Articles, and the Way of the Cross. There will be pierogi, baked goods, and Polish crafts for sale. Also, a prayer service and rosary will be held for addiction recovery on Tuesday, September 24th at St. Patrick's Church, 30 Main Street in South Hadley. The event begins at 6 p.m. and all are invited to pray for those who are suffering with addiction and those who love them. And you may remember Father Dennis Scavera sharing the exciting new initiative that St. Anne's Parish in Chicopee started last year called Christ Life. Well, beginning on September 25th, the seven-session Christ Life series will kick off with a delicious dinner and dynamic teaching, exploring important questions about God and the ultimate purpose He has for your life. The series will be held on Wednesday evenings at St. Anne Parish 30 College Street in Chicopee beginning September 25th through November 13th from 545 to 8 p.m. with a mini retreat day on Saturday, November 2nd from 9 to 3 p.m. Dinner and program are offered at no cost and it's limited to 50 participants. For a complete listing of these and other events, visit our calendar at iobserve.org, where you can also get the latest news on the Catholic faith. That's iobserve.org. And please join me again next Sunday as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time and kick off the academic year with our Catholic school students. That's next Sunday morning at 10 for the Chalice of Salvation, Your Spiritual Connection. 
Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us and may you be blessed with a happy and healthy week ahead.